Hey fellow fishing fanatic, so you're new to fishing and you just caught a bass and you don't know if it's a large mouth or a small mouth. Well, I'm here to help you. So relative to their body size, large mouths have big mouths. And what I mean by that is their jaw actually extends past their eye. So if you're holding it up and you see that the mouth when closed extends past its eye, it's definitely a large mouth, no doubt about it. A small mouth doesn't extend past the eye, it'll extend to the eye and stop. So, you, you know, when you're holding it up, looking at it with the mouth closed and the jaw comes to the eye and stops, it's a small mouth. Now there's several other ways that I'm about to go into detail on that, but that's the quick and dirty. So if that was helpful to you, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Otherwise, let's get started. My name is Wesley Littlefield with anglers.com and today I'm going to break down the differences between a large mouth and a small mouth so that you can identify them even when you're not even holding it in your hands. When you're fighting it on the line you'll be able to tell, oh that's a small mouth, oh no that's a large mouth. Most of the time. Granted every now and then I get tricked and I can't tell the difference or I think it's one and it's actually the other. But for the most part I get it right. As I mentioned there are visual differences besides the mouth even and so when you catch a bass and you see that it's got black speckles or almost a solid line down the middle of its body running horizontally then it's either a large mouth or a spotted bass so you can know that hey this isn't a small mouth large mouths are also a little bit lighter most of the time you know even in clear water they might get a little bit darker but if you catch them at the same time or side by side you know you'll notice that largemouth tend to be a little bit lighter green than smallmouth so if you catch a really dark fish more than likely it's a smallmouth but not always so smallmouth pattern or whatever you want to call it actually kind of reminds me of like tiger stripes it's going to run vertical and it's going to be the same kind of speckled line but they're going to be vertical across the body instead of horizontal like on a largemouth or a spotted bass. So that's how you can really quickly identify if you see, you know, you hold it up and there's vertical lines running on the bass, more than likely it's a smallmouth. As well as the visual differences, there's actually habitat or behavioral differences between both species. So you can pretty much identify, you know, like when you set the hook, oh, that's going to be a smallmouth simply on where you're actually fishing. So largemouth tend to prefer slower moving and they do a lot better in dirty water so if you're fishing like a my lake local lake is pretty dirty the water fluctuates but there's not like a current moving through it constantly and it's just a large mouth lake there are a few small mouth in there but it's primarily large mouth just because of the habitat that's around it small mouth don't tend to thrive in that area now every year i go fishing up in michigan and it's a smallmouth lake where I go. And it's crystal clear. I mean, I can see the bottom in almost six, seven, eight foot. You know, I can see way down. It's got a lot of boulders. There's even some grass. But typically, if I'm fishing up in the grass in the shallows, I'm catching more largemouth. When I move off a little bit into the rock piles and offshore a little ways, I catch all the smallmouth. Now, this lake is predominantly smallmouth, and that's I think because smallmouth really thrive in that clear water. Another place that smallmouth really thrive is in clear moving water. So if the water is moving, more than likely it's also a smallmouth area. I've caught a lot of smallmouth just in rivers in general. For whatever reason, largemouth don't like to fight the current nearly as much as a smallmouth does. And so you can kind of, you know, if you're fishing in a moving river, more than likely it's gonna be a small mouth. Not always, but more than likely. And behavioral differences. I will argue that small mouth pound for pound fight way harder than a large mouth. I think a, a two pound small mouth is like catching a four or five pound large mouth just in the way that they fight. They're ferocious, They're, that you just know when you set the hook and it takes off running, you're like, oh, this is a small mouth. This isn't a large mouth. And the way they fight and the way that they act even in the water, smallmouth tend to be kind of hang out in groups i mean you know i tend to see like two or three together at times where largemouth yes they school up 
but they tend to separate a little further and stay more spread out most of the time. I'm not saying they don't school up. Obviously they do. You can find a big school of fish and just keep catching, catching them out of that school. But most of the time you're going to see large mouth off on their own and small mouth tend to stay schooled up longer. So those are the differences between small mouth and large mouth bass. Now there's one rig that I've used from down here in Oklahoma all the way into Michigan and that's the wacky rig. If you don't know how to fish it, you can catch both species. I catch a lot of bass using the wacky rig. There's a video down below me showing you how to rig it and a little bit about how to fish it. So I'll see you in that other video. And until then, remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.